So for this example, I will jump over to Shaded View and we'll just go into Solid Mode. I'll select the floor and I'll press H to hide the floor. And when it comes to turning off things like the camera empty and the lights, if you shift click the eyeball, it will actually turn off the children as well, allowing you to quickly just clean up your scene as you see me doing here. At this point, UVing is just a matter of us just selecting an object along with selecting all and pressing Q and going under add modifier. And if we just shift click this, it will just add a grid material. And if we jump back over to render, we now have a fully UV'd object. However, if I press Control Z, we can go back to where we were, and we see that this object didn't actually receive a UV, and this is because this object is a curve, so we'll press Control A, Visual Geometry to Mesh, and then we'll select everything again. And if we just shift click, we now have added a UV for every object using the UV project. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. So in actuality, when it comes to UVing this, uh, instead of trying to take a shortcut using the procedural UV project solution, which will give you procedural UVs, we actually need real UVs for this. So as a prelude to actually getting started, because of the fact that I used all these Mr. Rad decals and I unified it all to have it all in collection one so I could re-instance it and use it later, I'm going to need to select all of these. It actually made me wish that there was a Shift G option to just select decals because that would be very handy. So I may be actually checking into that after this video. You know, every um, moment of work begats more ideas for potential improvements that could be made. So it is my curse, but um, not completely against it. So now that we have this cleaned up and we're only dealing with the mesh, let's look at this handle. So this handle is built up out of a curve. We could go back to solid view and press Alt V, look at the wireframe, and this is what our wireframe is. So I am just going to handle this in the most linear fashion. So I'm just going to convert geometry to mesh. And the first thing I'll do is perform a seam cut along the inside, grab one of these edges on the outside, and just mark it as seam, Control L, U, unwrap. I could be using hops to mark things as seams, but I don't actually want to do that since it would also mark them as sharp and affect shading as well and that's not necessary and I don't want to affect the shading shading the shading settings to make that work either so with everything else I'm just going to select everything and we're just gonna make our day shorter by choosing to smart apply and even though the camera was lazily selected and an empty is selected smart apply went through without a hitch if we tap into edit mode, we're looking at the truest form of these meshes. So let's say that we're actually wanting to UV this thing. Um, in this case, there is four different instances of it and also a level of sub D was applied with it. So that might not have actually been necessary, but let's say that we wanted to UV this anyways. We've already done this. Let's go ahead and proceed. I'm just gonna delete everything that's irrelevant and I'm just going to select the main shape, select what I want to mirror across, and we'll just mirror it back to where it was using modifiers. So then I could take it in local mode and clear the seam. And you'll you'll notice some patterns throughout this thing where you know I may go in and just you know hit it with sharpen and just investigate what pieces it gives me. For example, this one. We're looking at the UVs it gives us over here on the side, just pressing U. That's something a little bit better. Me being the way I am, I'm a big fan of grabbing the outside edges and just pinning it and then doing a second unwrap in order to get it to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, from the looks of it, it looks like that'll be fine. We can just hide that for this whole piece. We'll let this be its own piece, but all of this will not. So we'll control E, clear seam, grab this middle loop, mark seam select this, you unwrap. And with this thing, we can straighten it out, of course. And I believe there's tools for this that I could be using. However, I'm kind of old school when it comes to UVs. I handle everything by the book still because just old habits die hard. I learned how to UV a long time ago and I've always fallen back to what I learned back then with you know thinking of everything as a big, uh, paper origami that you're trying to figure out how to unwrap and fit into an envelope. I think I used to use a more serial killery uh, type explanation before, but I will just 
you know, set up these pieces and, you know, experiment with pack. And I'm saying experiment because more than likely these will all be unified onto the same sheet. But for now, let's go in and find our pack. And whose pack is that? That belongs to UV Magic. So not our problem. Where's Blender's pack? Wow, you enable UV Magic, it adds a lot of options. There's pack, which is working for us. Some of these look a little dense. I'm just making sure there's not geometry sitting on top of itself. But now this piece is unwrapped. So let's actually make a UV material that we can assign to things. And also in addition, I wanna make sure that power save does not have auto save on. And I wanna save this, not as QBox 179, but QBox 179 U for unwrap. And for our material, we're just going to stick in an image texture under color, new. We could just make this 2048 and we'll set it to UV grid, okay. And inside of the shading tab, we can actually mess with the nodes a little bit. So we'll at least put a texture coordinate down, just slap a UV in it. And now we're actually looking at the UVs that we're getting through hard work. However, we can also press Alt V and change this from solid texture toggle and actually see the textured view in the solid view without having to jump over to rendered, which can also be nice. So with this piece UV'd, we can just move this out the way. And now let's talk about this piece. Uh, with all these pieces, mirror was applied, so it's just going to be a nuance. I'm also gonna press W to exit box cutter because it won't be needed for this. And let's look at this piece individually. First, I'll hit it with a sharpen, which will kind of simplify things, but we wanna clear this particular seam. And if we go in face mode and select just these boundaries, we can see what we're getting here. We're just gonna to choose to unwrap. We'll go back to the UV view for this. And we're still in local as well. So we're just looking at what our UVs are as we're working, just making sure everything's somewhat continuous. We could just rely on the sharp markings to give us our UVs, but I feel that we could be a little bit more efficient than that. For example, right here, if we just clear this seam, we can actually have this whole area be a complete piece. Just press U to unwrap and we get a nice unwrap for that. For this area, we want to probably remove these lines. They're not needed. In general, they're not needed. And we'll just press U to unwrap. So far, so good. And if we select this piece, you would think that you would just wanna unwrap it lazily like so into a bunch of pieces, but uh, I personally find that to be lazy. So instead we will mark seam and then select a boundary loop and actually make that the seam. And let's unwrap that again. And that's a little bit better. However, I like to really get these things to fit in their envelope. So we'll add some lines there. And that's actually the best use for it. For this one, we'll actually remove these seam lines and choose to unwrap this like so. And it looks like with Live Unwrap On, it might be a little bit funner for us. Sometimes I don't even experiment with the new features of Blender itself when it comes to this because I'm so caught up in my vanilla ways. But when it comes to UVs, I still consider them one of those sacred things that I feel is be better done in vanilla Blender. So there's not a lot of tool expansion I have personally to you know get the most out of UVs. I'm also going to clear any scenes from this. We're also going to clear any marks from this. And I'm pretty sure with this thing, we could just select all and press U, but we cannot press U. So let's select these four using L and press Control I and delete them. I'm sorry if I'm failing to go over all of the hotkeys completely accurately. That's what the hotkey display in the bottom is for. I closed it and reloaded it before this video just to make sure y'all were able to see the hotkeys freshly. I feel like sometimes the program doesn't show my hotkeys in certain states. Also part of UVing for me is investigating the geometry. In lieu of uh, easy geometry work, I sometimes don't look to see if geometry is actually working out. Like right here, we see a pretty bad overlap. So it's good for us to actually go in and resolve that. And there's no doubles. 
but we select this now and we press U, and this is actually a result that I expected. If we would have solidified this using Ramon with R and solidify, we wouldn't have had this issue, but I, who knows, I was probably just being lazy, and now that issue has come back to haunt me. And there's no need for seams on this. Everything's a continuous piece. So we'll press numpad slash, come out of local, and we'll just mirror this to the other side. And let's give this our UV material, which I'll need to press Alt H and bring everything back for this. We'll just rehide these. And what is this material called? This material is called, I was about to give it a sarcastic name like <laughs> Y-O-U-V, but sometimes I don't even have uh, humor in me. All right, there we go. So we'll give that the UV material. And we're just looking at this thing with our UV material just as we're working. And this one is UVs for reals this time, not like last time where we were playing around. Whenever it comes to box cutter in a way that I work with it personally, I actually use the tool in a way where uh, I kind of envision um, the, ki the kind of pain I'm about to be going through. Like for example, if I'm going to be UVing and exporting this thing to a game engine, it's definitely going to alter my design uh, choices a little bit. And that's not a bad thing, but you know, you should definitely use bo booleans responsibly. You can't just come over here using booleans and then um, put the onus of responsibility on us to help you get a perfect game ready mesh. These sort of things are things that, you know, require a little bit of work as you see here. However, you know, if I were to have thought of any improvements for this type of pipeline, you know, we would have, we would have implemented them. But when it comes to this sort of thing, I, I, I view this as a, uh, you know, type of auditing process, similar to adding sub D to a model, being an auditor of how good your geometry is for subdivision. This will be a test of how good your sub D, your modeling is for UVing. So you'll have to, you know, make design choices accordingly. Uh, sounds sounds probably terrible, but you know it's the easiest way to put it. Because you know uh, when it comes to my personal work and working with clients, um, you know it's just a question of you know do you want UVs? How many UVs you want? Uh, all right, I'll I'll do it. Because you know at the end it's just a matter of keystrokes to just go in and um, break things apart. But I mean you're the person who actually made and designed this stuff, so. You know, you got to adjust that design if you don't want to um, pay the pauper, which I feel that any part can be UV'd. I wanted to do a series of videos just uh, unwrapping some of the more challenging assets I've done just to kind of um, bring that point home and show that, you know, no matter what you make, you should be able to unwrap it just based on the ideology. And, you know, even just using vanilla tools, you should be able to pull it off. I'm trying to select this area with L but it will not, and that's probably because this seam needs to exist. And then I'm able to select this region, and if we press U, because I'm um, a creature of habit, we see that it's not even needed, but we're making short work of this. And so a popular way to UV for me has always been to just go through, mark the lines that I want, select the boundary, see how the wraps look, and then hide it if it's actually optimal, and then at the end deal with everything as a whole. But you know, over the course of this whole conversation that, you know, probably has enraged someone in the audience, um, you know, we've unwrapped this part and made short work of it. And at the same time, I'm also able to see that, you know, Blender's UV workflows are not bad, not bad at all. However, if we look at this part, we could do better. And by better, I mean, put one more line so it looks like that. And then if we select everything and we look at it, this is what we're looking at so far with our UVs. And if we Alt H everything, this is what we're looking at with our UVs. So we'll go under UV and we'll choose to pack, pack islands. And this is what our packed islands look like so far. And if we just slap this with the UV material, we see that we got some pretty nice UVs for getting started with this. There's always better ways to UV, and I'm sure that there's UV experts in the audience who are saying, I would have UV'd it this way or that way. Well. This video wasn't for you then, I guess. But I do aim to um, try to assist with this because it's not a part of the process that I run from, but it is just one of the uh, lesser touch aspects of hard ops because our, to our tool's aim is to be a workflow assistant. And this aspect of the workflow 
is just handled by so many other tools so much more handily. In fact, I'm a big fan of UV squares for jobs that require square type UVs. So we're just selecting things, getting to the boundary of it, going to face mode, and just looking at what our UVs are. And we could actually work smarter if we wanted to. We could just UV half, and we look at this side. And this is what we're looking at. And you may think, oh, that's good. That's a good UV. Well, actually, yeah, it is. Well, not, not the best, but, but suitable. So looks like my wallpaper is changing, which causes my computer to have a slight lag. I'll never stop my changing wallpapers. And we'll just unmark everything. And then I'll shift tilde to just remark everything with the outside not being marked. And this is just to kind of bring some sanity back to uh, the process here. So if we look at what we have, this is what we're looking at. However, I do believe that cutting it short could actually be beneficial. So let's do that. We'll just mark seam. And now we have that seam marked. And so here we are looking at our, basically our finished asset. I'm going to actually mark that as a seam in the back and we'll just alt H everything. And I'm gonna to choose to just apply that new mirror that we just applied mean that we added to this. And if we select everything, we press U to unwrap, we now see the result of our UV work. So hovering over this piece, we see this long and I don't know what example, what type of innuendo I can add to, add to make it less what that was, but we'll just press H to hide. And looking at everything else, everything is looking good. So we can just slap this with the UV, look at what we have for UV. And if we want, we could baby this and get the alignment just right, which, you know, just for kicks, let's do that. I don't know what causes these occasional hangs, but this moment has allowed me to reflect and realize that we're only 16 minutes into this video. So I was aiming to make this uh, not, not terribly long, uh, just something to talk about the process of UVing. I don't know what's causing things to hang like this. SX zero and let's UV that again. And now actually we got to pin it and then UV it. I mean, then unwrap. And now we have something that's actually aligned properly. So I'm just such a big fan of using this particular workflow and has always been my UV go-to for years now when it comes to UVing. So we'll take this piece as well and we'll go in edit mode. And since we don't have any mark sharps, we can take advantage of the situation. And you know, with every type of unwrap, I always try to approach things differently. Like you would think I would just mark sharp and just press U, but instead we're gonna try to take as much as we can like so just select it and then jump to the boundary. When it comes to boundary, I actually have it under select boundary loop, which I've right clicked and just added a hotkey of shift tilde and saved in my preferences by saving my preferences. Let's look at this. And that's a, a fine, nice unwrap, no issue there. And let's, let's say we wanted the rest of it. And that's what we're getting. We're getting a mess. So let's remove this seam. You unwrap. Let's select all of these. And you unwrap. And that's pretty much what I was expecting with this. And if we you unwrap, that is precisely the result I was expecting, except for such terrible deformation, you know. So in times like this, it may be easier to just mark it as the same, cut our losses. This is an interior face area anyways. And this UV set actually just looks a lot better to me aesthetically. And if we look at what we're getting for these corner areas, it's not the best, but you know, one line can relieve a lot of tension and also save you um, a bit on your car insurance. So we'll select this again and just look at what we have. And that's actually a more relaxed unwrap. There's actually ways in Blender to see the results of your unwrap as far as the tension. 
let's see if that's still there. We'll press in, and if we look at view, uh, maybe it's not, or it's just not where I think it is. All right, but in any case, we're just gonna select the other half of this and delete it. And selecting this, we're just gonna alt X. And instead of modifier or bisect where we have to apply, I'm just gonna choose modifier and apply, which will add and apply a mirror modifier. And now if I go in and look at my UVs, we see that everything's fine. And I could actually go under UV, pack islands again, and that's so far so good. So we will just go out of that. And now we can actually go and look at this piece. So how do we want to deal with this? Well, I'm going to select one fourth quadrant of it and delete it. And we're going to bring up the mirror with Alt, that, Alt X and then press X to reset it. And we're just going to mirror it on the X and the Y. But we want to turn it off for edit mode because we're going to be working in edit mode. Control S, save, just regular save, not brought to you by power save, but save recommended to, I still recommend power save to everyone. So continuing on, we will shift tilde. And let's actually undo that. Go back to our face selection and how much do we want to take? We could take all of that. Mark seam. And everything so far so good here. We could deal with the tension if we wanted to, but you know, sometimes I just ask, is it ever really necessary to do such? But we'll just slap this with the UV material and everything is so far so good. Looking great. And we come out of local mode and we get to our next piece and every piece. I remember cutting every piece of this model. It's like, uh, you know, at the time I was cutting this, I wasn't actually planning on UVing it later. So it's a perfect model because, you know, uh, there's a meme of like um, Jerry the Cat drawing or something. And it's like engineers designing shit, knowing they don't have to uh, make it work. And or artists designing shit, knowing they don't have to make it work. Uh, it's almost like a, it could be a meme for box cutter, right? Like you could be box cutting and just give no no care to what uh, consequences you're gonna have as far as the UV unwrap process. So going through this is fine. Like I said, um, we're just gonna just jump through these UV hoops for this piece. I'm just gonna let that live. And if we take this and pack our islands, we can slap a UV material on this and see what we're getting and that will that will work. So. We're getting to the very finish here. Same thing with this. I'm just going to hit it with a bisect mod, which will just end the other mirrors. And we're just going to select all the pieces and mark a seam. And working this way will really simplify your unwrap process because it just brings it down to its most base shape, especially when you start UVing and removing regions of it. It just simplifies it. So. Sometimes I feel like UVing difficulty with users can be in its approach, but there is no easy automatic solution out there. I mean, let's say I wanted to UV this glass. Let's say I wanted to really UV this glass fast. I'm just gonna hit it with a sharpen, which means that this edge in the middle just looks so weird. We'll remove both of those. For some reason, middle edges just aren't looking good in glass nowadays. And we'll press Control Numpad Plus to grow this and we'll press Control E, clear seam, and then Control tilde, and we'll mark seam, which basically has given this whole top area to the glass. We can see it at the bottom, and we look at this, and it's been broken into all these little pieces based on the sharp. So we just want to clear that because that's actually a better result. So if we look at both of them together, actually, you know, we look at them together, and it's like, hey man. Give me a better uh, glass unwrap. I mean, I guess. So, in fact, let's do that again. We'll set our seam in this area. 
and we could just hide this. And you might notice that on the keyboard, I am tapping quite a few keys, and that's because, you know, this process requires a lot of jumping between vert face edge, and it's just part of the game when it comes to UV. I mean, the best advice I can give you is as you do it, you get better. I mean, if you're not getting better, that's um, another problem. You know, probably should make a tool for that. So here we are looking at our UVs. And, you know, while it looks like some kind of, I don't know, I should stop looking for shapes inside of my UVs. It's not normal, all right? And these UVs are not normal. I don't want my UVs from the top of my glass looking like that. Especially because this is the only area that's being shown. So we're just going to mark a seam, which instantly fixes it thanks to live unwrap. Uh, we'll, we will press 3 and then H to hide that face. And these seams actually look good too. So that will work. We can just press H to hide and this brings us to the finale. The topmost piece, the most difficult piece, and I only got five minutes left before this video becomes quote unquote long, long and difficult. Also, looking at this, you know, there's some uh, curiosities in here. Now I remember when I made this box, I was working on this idea of a dynamic Boolean that you could put on an object and then adjust as a Boolean to adjust a bevel. And this model was from that idea. And so we have some little poppy areas here. So let's uh, get in and clean that up. And so with me, I, I'm weird with the weld. I will bring in a weld and then I'll roll it too far. And then I'll roll it up above the bevel. And then I just know that it did its job. Maybe too well. You know, we turn off weld. This is what we're looking at. And do we actually want to lose much actually yes let's go ahead and just weld that call it a day and we're going to turn off bevel for this because bevel is just going to uh, be a bit of a complication bevel is its own talk but when it comes to the bevel modifier and blender it's still a work in progress and is always in the process of getting better i mean if you have complaints about the mirror mod or the bevel mod now um you know the way it used to be was way different and it's always in a state of getting better so as bevel being the uh, center of our tool we are grateful for any enhancements that come to it but we're also always thinking of creative ways to work around it and use it as well as it gets enhanced. But the bevel is one of my favorite modifiers in Blender. So we'll shift tilde and we'll just mark seam. And this area will unwrap like so, which just doesn't look the nicest. So we'll just put a seam down the middle. And will I be able to make this in the time span? Let's find out. We'll just select that, paint it, control E, mark seam. And that's actually looking good already. Um, when it comes to UVs, I've also shown how I would UV if I cared, but there's other levels of UVing where you could just UV very quick if you do not care. And for this area, what we wanna do is, is clear seam and then mark seam and this will allow us to get a nice uv on this particular area sometimes just kind of uh, linearizing uvs is the easiest way to simplify things also this thing could be handled a multitude of different ways but because of how we set this up i'm going to have to do it this way so i'm going to select that face this face this face this face and we'll press Control plus plus and we'll just put a boundary loop there. And let's see what UVs we get. These are just some little pens. These will work. So now we are left with some of the uh, bigger, more painful elements like this big obelisk on the inside. In fact, I will go to vert mode and we'll just select the tips, just the tips. 
and we'll press control plus and grow it and press control tilde to select a boundary and we've selected our loops and if i go to three i can select these individual areas and just see how they're resulting and they're resulting like that so we will just let that live so we're approaching the finale let's see what uv we got for the track just something unacceptable so we're looking at it from the front which means I want to slap this on from the back and we grab this piece and we unwrap it actually no need to unwrap it what we do want to do is grab these SX 0 P and if we grab this and unwrap again we can get a little more straight so we grab these SX we grab these SX 0 P and we unwrap again and that's about as good as that's going to get for that particular shape unless we really wanted to get in and tweak it but we got 15 seconds left on the clock so we mark a scene there and this is what we're looking at so we're going to sx0 p u unwrap s grab keep this selection as well expand our selection p u unwrap and we just slapped this with the UV material and we are done. So even though I exceeded the time dedicated for this by uh, 12 seconds, um, I was able to UV the entirety of this box within 30 minutes. So let's talk about actually getting this UV and exported. The choices of keeping the materials and all that stuff should have been made at the very beginning if I wanted to give them different UV sets, but Part of the good part of Blender 2.8 is you can um, now have multi-object selection where we can just select all like I'm doing here and also saving religiously because I definitely do not want to lose this work. We will tab into edit mode and Alt H unhide everything. And here we are looking at our UVs. If we export it now, these are UVs we would have. I want to Alt P unselect everything. And if you think I'm going to press U and unwrap again, you got another thing coming, but what I will do I don't know why certain objects are not selected in the side over there but we're just going to select everything and just choose to pack I uh, see, alright, so we want to choose to apply certain modifiers now, me personally, I'm a big fan of actually using batch operations, which comes in handy just for those times where you really need it. Like right now, right now, I really need to apply this. So by just right clicking and applying it, we can just apply all the mirror modifiers that were present there previously. Let's just double check. And it looks like it may be having some issues with 2.9 at this time. Let's try that again. All right. So a little strange in 2.9. Let's go ahead and double back around to Smart Apply. So Smart Apply has definitely applied it because that's the job of Smart Apply. We've had internal debates on it. And let's tap back into edit mode and actually select everything and choose UV Pack Islands. And now we actually have this model UV'd and ready to go. In fact, you know, something about seeing all your UVs just packed at the end just makes my day. However, you know, even though some of the squares are bigger than the other, that's where we could use something like Texel Density Checker in order to make sure everything works out right. So let's give that one a shot. And our texture size is 2048. All right, and we'll just set my TD. And now we have perfectly UV textiles that actually fit uh, perfectly. But if we want them to all fit within the same map, that's where we would want to basically pack our islands. So now we actually have um, good UV tinsel density. We have UVs on this and we're able to export this and continue on with our lives. So I hope that this was able to provide a little bit of insight on UVs in general and you know, hopefully help you out. I mean, the goal of this video definitely 
isn't to um, you know talk to anyone with any sort of condescension but I only aim to help you guys get better and get the most out of your tool experience so with that we could wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time so whenever it comes to exporting your model we also have utilities to assist with that as well so I'm actually going to save this model and I would just save this and export it as the high, but this isn't a high. The high would have the actual materials on it and be the original model. It wouldn't be this model that I've uh, UV optimized. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove the uh, bevel modifiers uh, from each of the objects so we can just export the low version. And that is because, you know, having a bevel modifier present on your low will just absolutely destroy the UVs in, in ways that I can't even begin to explain. Uh, if I had a dollar for every job I've done where I've uh, meticulously laid out UVs and then had to apply to bevel mod and watched them get destroyed, I would probably have as much money as I did from the jobs that destroyed said UVs, but um, that's neither here nor there. One day I, I do dream that you know UVs will um, not be destroyed by the bevel, but it's just one of those things that's just worthy of, of explaining while I'm um, going through and checking every object to not have it. Um, I normally would be using batch operations, but it doesn't appear that they have uh, compatibility for 2.9 yet, which is understandable seeing that 2.9 isn't officially out. So with this object being simplified, we now have our UV unwrapped low version of the model. In fact, we can go in our camera mode and just really admire our UV madness here. But I mean, it's just, check it's just a checker box, totally hideous, right? So in hard ops, if we have an active selection in our object, you can um, go under say settings and choose to export. Actually it's under mesh tools. Under mesh tools is an option to export as OBJ. And where our options differ from the default ones in Blender is that we will actually choose to triangulate and export only the selection. So I'm going to call this testy box one. Actually, no, I got to call this Q box. 179 I shouldn't export files and just name them other things so we'll just call this 179 underscore low and that's it after this little thing on my cursor goes away that means that this model has been exported properly and we'll assume with it saying zero that it's done so I'm gonna go under my open files and we're just gonna open up the original 179 this is the OG 179 the one unaffected by any of our UV shenanigans. The floor is already hidden and it looks like our light and cam are also already gone. So we're just going to select all, shift click. We have all these decals here, which decals are a saga for another day, unfortunately. Um, when Decal Machine 2 comes out and you have the ability to export and bake decals, I look forward to being able to talk about that. However, at this time, they are only a uh, complication for this particular workflow that I aim to demonstrate, but I do feel that a uh, machine is hard at work and we'll be improving that probably in his next updates. So we're going to export this OBJ and using the power save OBJ folder that I like to use, we're just going to call this thing QBox179, but instead of low, we're going to call it high. And I always call it high, like high, you know, instead of high, I don't know, save two letters something weird about it. <laughs> uh, we, we have these talks a lot internally. It's like sometimes people will use shorthand to just save two letters. I don't know. It's like a, like a meme at this point. But anyways, now that we have this exported out on both the high and the low, we can now go into Substance Painter.